Oh, shit. So I have just started out early. I did not press the button I thought I was pressing, and wow, that turned out really badly. So I don't know if you can hear me or not. Uh, I really apologize. <laughs> I was going to play with the angle and stuff, and whoops, <laughs> that's not going to happen. So here I am, and uh, you know I did this before, so whoops. <laughs> so since I am early uh, by a few minutes, so it was at 5.58, I'm uh, going to be doing a video here on the Senator Concord, and uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I, I was going to try a whole bunch of things here. I uh, have the wrong microphone hooked up, so let's see if I can switch microphones because I'm on a really bad microphone. Okay, so. Have a lovely microphone here, but uh, it's not being used. But it apparently, apparently, the computer knows to use that camera. So who knows what's going on? I think I figured out what's wrong with my angle, though. Boom! Ha. Fixed one of the things I don't like about that angle. So here we go. Um, so yeah, I. Uh, apologize uh again this is a little early because i thought i could play with settings first and cannot uh if you can't hear me it's because the wrong microphone is picking up the sound but anyway i'm going to be doing a first impressions of a senator concord uh my living room looks like it's had an earthquake Let's see, straighten the curtains a little bit. So I just want to welcome ODE, whose message is retracted. Terry Love, welcome. Yeah, an insomniac in the UK. Yeah, if you're up right now watching this, you are an, insom in, in, an insomniac. Uh, ODE is back. Hi from Portugal. Glad to have you. Dean Martin, welcome from West Virginia, uh, a state I've never actually visited. And welcome to Terry Love. And I'm glad to hear the sound is good, because uh, the sound is all on the computer, not my good microphone. And, oh, and we have, well, Pemby from Maryland, and Famil Jen Lick from Sweden. Great, great to have you. Uh, oh, so it sounded louder when I took this closer. Uh. Okay, I don't know if that's doing anything, but uh, I hope so so uh oh and dean martin says he has a cheap senator pen and it's a really nice pen yeah i love my senator pens on you know they, they come in varying quality but in general they're good pens so today i'm going to talk about senator concord uh this was a neat one that's arrived in a shipment from myoberpens.com and i remember opening the shipment saying i don't remember ordering that and then i just thought well i must have and didn't know what i was doing Oh, Terry Love says he's going deaf. So, must be it's all on the good microphone. So, I apologize, but now I know. Uh, Buford Lively from North Carolina and Barry Levin from Colorado Pen Show next weekend. Oh, he's coming in from the future. Awesome. Um, so, anyway, this arrived from myoverpens.com. I was like, what? I don't remember ordering that. But it turns out they sent it to uh, certain customers who'd spent a certain... Um, I don't want to give the amount because I'll embarrass myself, but above a certain amount of dollar amount. And uh, I was one of that group. So, yay. They actually have a lot of these left. So uh, there's more you can get. Dean Martin says they sound very good. So I'm going to open this up. Now, in full disclosure, I did open it up because I didn't want to get to this point in the video and say, oh, shit, there's no... Sorry. I mean, oh, shoot, there's no, uh, yeah, it's live. Uh, there's no uh, converter in the pen. I, I didn't want to be surprised that way. So I opened it up to check. Um, but inside, this is roughly what it looked like. So I'll open up the cover. The fountain pen was inside a nice little baggie. I took it out, like I said, because I didn't want to be surprised and discover, oh, there's no converter. Now what? Oh, we got to stop the video or just have random blankness while I locate a converter for it and make sure it fits. 
So uh, didn't want to do that. Polishing cloth. And then what remains, i got to help hold it in place here. We have a ballpoint, or actually that's the ballpoint, a ballpoint refill, and a fountain pen. Yes, Chris J., that was definitely a potty mouth. I apologize. I did not mean to do that. I always joke with my students. They try to distract me. say, hey, you show your videos in class. I said, I can't. I swear too much. And I really did, so I'm sorry. Uh, well, there goes any hope of monetization from this one. All right, so the ballpoint, apparently there is a refill in it. I have the feeling it probably won't write, but I have a spare just in case. Uh, I'll try to do something with it, but the main part I care about is, oops, sorry, I was hoping there's something else in the case, is the fountain pen. So Senator Concord, you may actually recognize the word Concord if you're a child of the 80s like me. A Concord used to be a jet that could go faster than the speed of light. Sorry, 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 speed of sound. If you can go faster than the speed of light, uh, my whole physics degree is toast. Uh, speed of sound. Um, although, wouldn't travel be nice if you could go faster than the speed of light? Uh, but anyway, Concord has a, a nice metal finish, which is how I know, knew right away I didn't order it. Uh, but texture, which is interesting. And then what I appreciate is this plastic grip. Uh, Terry Love says, uh, what, where, I lost this line, I'm sorry. Uh, oh, Brits wouldn't consider that potty mouth. Yeah, probably not. I... I I know foreign exchange students sometimes struggle with the whole U.S. thing about swearing. Uh, not just U.K. <laughs> German ones. Oh, wait, I can't say that word in the United States. What? <laughs> um, Dean Martin suggests I need a seven-second delay, probably. And J.J. McCack has joined us. So as far as an ink, I, uh, I have this. Oops, I just flipped it. I have this bottle of Apache Sunset that's nearly empty. That's the one I want to use with this pen. So we're going to do the video with this, with Apache Sunset. So I'm going to do that gross thing I have to do to flip everything around. So, you know, the camera has to go down, but everything's reversed. So then I have to do this to it to make it actually work. So Battle of Apache bottle of Apache Sunset. Holy cow. Maybe this live streaming wasn't such a hot idea. Um, the pen, Senator Concord. Again, in honor, I believe, of the Concord. Okay, got to remind myself that what I see on my screen is the exact opposite of what you see on your screen. Open it up. Let's just take a quick glance. Oh, wow, yeah, Iridium Point. And that is so bass backwards, I can't read it. Iridium point. I'll bet all of you can read what that says. Except me, because it's backwards. I'm just drawing a complete blank. Reform? Does that seriously say reform? Yeah, that's why I can't read it. I'm not expecting the word reform. Holy cow. Oh, it doesn't. It's Germany. Okay, reform. Yeah, Terry Love is right. I'm making this up as I go along. I didn't even plan this puppy. I was going to write down a checklist so I didn't forget stuff, but yeah. So reform. Thank you. The, the nib is made by reform. Thank you, G.G. McCock and, uh, well, G.G. McCock. So let's see if I can uh, fill this puppy, because I actually should have tested this converter, see if it actually worked. I am at the point with this bottle of ink that I pretty much need to use that uh, ink miser. I have one. Why am I not using it? I don't know. I even thought before this video, oh, I should get that out, because I'm probably going to need it soon. I need it. Okay, that wasn't a very good fill, and you saw how I was holding it. That was just awful. So I'm pretty sure the pen can do a better job. Oops, and I just did that. 
I'm pretty sure the pen can do a better job than that. But I'm going to hurry to see how this thing can write, so I'll worry about doing a good fill on it later. I'll get together and have some private time with my ink miser. Uh, Dean Martin has a cheap reform, too. I, you know what? I have a cheap reform, uh, a reform 1745, which actually has a really nice nib, and it's a student pen with a steel nib, but wow. Ink guy, welcome. We're, I'm trying out a live stream first impression. Uh, now you can see a previously recorded first impression with the same ink. Uh, Terry Love, my senators are fussy about converters. Many are loose. I honestly don't have very many senators which uh, have converters. So uh, this may be a new one for me. Uh, J.G. McCock mentions about Arrow. Yes, that was kind of my conclusion about Arrow pens. Um, the Dutch Collections Company bought, received the company for the debt owed. Yeah, that, that's how I interpret it. And when I found out it was a de uh, debt collection company, I was like, yep, that's got to be it. So this is a Senator Concord. I don't know the nib size. Um, just looking at it, I'd say a medium. The ink in it is Noodler's Apache Sunset. Which is a very good shading ink. This is a... You know, I'm seeing some shading with this. Not amazing amounts, but I'm seeing it. Um, flex... There's no pressure. There's me trying. Not, again, not amazing, but I'm seeing a little bit of line variation to it. Uh, I always try and do this. And then test test for obliqueness. It not very oblique. Uh, let's see, wetness and flow. Kind of a silly test. The main thing I'm seeing here is does it just continue writing? Um, let's see. JJ McCock says, no need. I have a Slovak last name, but is pronounced May as in the month Sack. Oh, Masak. Okay. JJ Masak. So I apologize. Uh, that's what happens with my, my last name, too, because. Uh, Somewhere along the line, they decided to Americanize its pronunciation with a with a complicated Polish spelling, which uh, my students find complicated. Uh, smear test. Kind of a test of uh, the pen and the ink. So, you know, wet-ish. I, I wouldn't say this is one of my super wet pens. It's just a little bit wet. All right, so uh, the feed, nothing super special. Terry Love says the pen uh, ha has uh, $50 on eBay. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. You know, I, I figure if myuberpens.com is just giving this to me, it can't be worth that much. And uh, actually on their website, I should just quick, take a quick look. Myuberpens.com. So we're looking for the pen and pen, no, the two pen set. All right, so they have a Senator Concord 403 Brilliant Chrome pencil and ballpoint and fountain pen set for $59.99 and the uh, 1970 Senator Concord 500 Brilliant Chrome and gold fountain pen and ballpoint for, uh, oh, and in an extra fine for $44.99. So, yeah, I think you're right. So uh, you couldn't see where I just switched, but yeah, that's what I saw. Uh, and on Hill, I'm sorry, Angel, sorry, Angel Alice, uh, welcome. Oh, you're from Pennsylvania. Welcome. I feel like I we may have discussed that before. Yes, we have. I now I'm remembering. JJ McCock. At times, they prefer those textured grip styles. Yeah, actually, this textured grip is. Pretty sweet. It's, I'm liking it. 
ODE. Have I ever seen a senator with a hood and nib like a Parker 51? True story. I have seen a semi-hooded nib, but I've never seen a truly hooded nib. Uh, senator Cracked Blind Cap, which has shown up on this channel a few times and is due a review, has a semi-hooded nib or possibly be, could be called an inlaid or intarsia nib. Uh, Dean Martin says, Shimanak here where I live. Yeah, that, that would be a complicated one. Okay, yep, we're right. Angel Alice, yep, she, we... Uh, are from the same part of Pennsylvania. Is it heavy? No, this is actually very light. Like if I was blind, I wouldn't realize it was a metal pen. Um, before I forget, let's do some reverse writing. The ink guy holds on to the idea. It's really called Senator Cracked Blind Cap. Yeah, sadly, um, it wasn't sold with a cracked blind cap. Ooh, wow, that's kind of scratchy and really horrible. Um, Siro, hello again what, from a former student. <laughs> Once brought a crappy record player to school to play your, your Eurythmic single. That has been a long time ago. Um, yeah, I, uh, I can't even remember why I did that. But, but yeah, true story, I have some old uh, records hanging out in my uh, uh, one of my drawers in my desk. You know, some old writing stuff, some old, or not writing stuff, some old discs, some old storage material, uh, a beta tape, a VHS tape, and uh, yes, a Eurythmics single is one of the things hanging out in there. So, cool. Uh, J.J. Masak. If that blind cap is celluloid or cellulose acetate, you can weld the crack with, ooh, slightly terrifying, but good point. Something I might have to risk maybe with a cheaper pen first. Terry Love, can't go wrong. Yeah. And uh, ODE. Okay, re remembers the pen I'm talking about. All right, where, where was I? Oh, yeah, I was going to do a uh, Pierre Gustafson test, which is world famous by now. I think it passed that one pretty well. So, yeah, I'm, I'm impressed with this pen. Um, I'm actually enjoying it. Uh, Buford Lively says the acetone weld is a great idea. Um, but Peggy Williams brings up my thought. You know, I uh, I know that kind of thing is done. That's why I want to try it on a cheaper pen first. I'm not sure if I have the skill to do it. Um, I'm also noticing that I'm holding uh, this pen out in the air a lot, and I haven't noticed any hard starts, so it seems to hold a seal pretty, or not a seal, but seems to resist drying out pretty well, like a, Hooded nib wood. Ink guy mentions that other reviewers do and refer to as Pierre Gustafson test. Well, of course, he's it's a world famous test. <laughs> uh, Terry loves some super glue might be safer. Yeah, probably true. Um, okay, JJ Masak, use a three haired brush. Yeah, if I'm gonna heal a crack, I don't have a crack pen. Oh. I sort of have a cracked pen. Okay, this isn't really cracked. It's chipped. But, uh, you know, if I had a crack here and, and I want to weld it, I want, like, my acetone right here in the crack, not all over the place. Um, but, yeah, that makes sense to, just to do it right in the area. I don't know if my skill set is up to it, but that does sound like a good idea. Maybe one day when I'm just really with steady hands and I feel like going nuts and taking a risk. And, you know, truth is it's a blind cap. It's not like it's the pen cap or something. I do have a pen with a pen cap that needs the same thing. So blind cap might be a safe one to experiment on. I don't know. I just noticed that the, end, the uh, finial of this pen is somewhat scalloped. Can we show that or is autofocus not going to let me? 
Uh, the other end is scalloped, but not gold. I can rebuild cracked lips of caps if I have donor broken cellulite pens. Oh! That sounds absolutely terrifying, but so, so, so tempting. Terry Love suggests laying off the Jack Daniels for a day to study the hands. Um, probably the coffee also, just saying. Yeah, um, actually, I've had Jack Daniels, but it's been a long time. And J.G. Masak says make sure the colors match. Yes, absolutely. Good point. So, so far I'm impressed with this pen. Uh, drink steady the hands. Um, coffee, probably not so much. Uh, alcohol probably steadies it, but then also makes your reaction time slower. So you're like, oh, whoops, I smeared it in the wrong place. I better fix that. Oops, 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 God. Oh, shoot. Yeah, reaction time. So probably not. Wine drinker, yeah. Coffee. I think I drink more coffee or uh, actually I've become a tea drinker since I uh, cut back my coffee to one cup a day. So uh, coffee and tea are my main vices. I, you know, wine, yes. <laughs> um, some of the harder stuff once in a while. JJ Masak says, when I learned guitar, they say drink to relax before playing or practicing. At work, they say no drinks to remain accurate. You just can't win. True. Um, I think the big thing with drinking with alcohol is uh, it does dull a lot of things. Um, I, I want to, I don't want to talk like an expert on drinking, but uh, it, it can relax, but the other thing with it is it brings its own set of stresses and problems. So, uh, you know, it's not something I suggest on a regular basis. Let's just go there without my, me having a whole bunch of science prepared. Uh, Dean Martin, dissolve the right plastic and acetone and makes a nice brush on. Ooh, or wipe on finish for wood. Now that sounds neat. I have never tried that. That sounds fun. And by the way, speaking of drinks, don't drink acetone. Uh, Ink Guy drinks black tea and water all day with students. That's pretty much me, although... I mix it up with green tea. You know, the coffee, I make that first thing in the morning here at home. Uh, about three quarters of it are gone by the time students show up. And uh, and then I make tea for the rest of the day. Am I becoming British drinking tea? <laughs> there's things about Great Britain I wouldn't mind. But uh, I think there's things going on in Great Britain that remind me a lot of the United States, too, at the moment. So uh, probably not becoming British. But... Uh, you know, tea is good stuff. Uh, Angel Alice, coffee and matcha. I don't know what that is. Matthew is here. Uh, JG Masak, I'll drink tea if I make it but won't buy it. Yeah. Don't buy tea. Um, Soro enjoys seeing impressions on cheaper pens, wanting to dip my pens into fountain pens, but don't want to spend a lot just to try getting into them. I agree. Um that's part of what led me into vintage is I don't like the price of a lot of modern pens. Like I hate to think what this pen would cost if it was modern, uh, especially when you think about what all came with it. And we haven't tried the ballpoint. So before I switch the camera around, well, that was a fail. <laughs> that must be why they provided an extra. When do I get this open? Or do I, Ooh, okay. This turns. This may not be how you do it. But I kind of think that this is dried out. So let's try the metal one that my uberpens.com sent to me. Um, but yeah, cheaper pens are pretty awesome. Uh, you know, it's a chance to try pens, but maybe without the commitment or other issues. Uh, Soro says, I enjoy seeing impressions on cheaper pens. But, oh, yeah, I read that one. Uh, Ink Guy says it was the American tea that was thrown in the harbor. <laughs> Could be. I wasn't there. 
Okay, yeah, we're right now. So I don't like that I'm now holding metal, but at the same time, it's got that texture, so it's a lot easier. Um, yeah, Terry Love, you pretty much said what I was trying to say more diplomatically. Angel Alice, green tea. Yeah, I like green tea. Matthew Bedeau, Brexit is a disaster. You know, I don't live in your country, but uh, looking from the outside, I think I agree. J.J. Masek, the modern aspect of overcharging for a simple turned acrylic pen on machinery and the same old Yovo nib. Um, I got in a little trouble for expressing my opinion on that. But yeah, I uh, you know, if we're just shaping the acrylic a little bit different, and it's the same nib, is the experience really that different? Maybe that's why I'm going with vintage so much. I, I like vintage. Uh, I will say... This is going a decent, doing a decent job, but ah, okay. We'll set that nasty ballpoint aside, uh, Matthew. But oh, yeah, we are going around in circles. Well, <laughs> again, if if I comment on the UK, I'm I'm talking as an outsider and. Uh, you know, I know how sometimes I hear stuff about the United States. It's like, no, it's not quite like that. Um, so I, you know, I try to be careful. I, I actually had an article sent to me by a pen pal today about uh, rural America. I'm like, okay, yes, that's rural America in Arkansas, but it doesn't describe rural North Dakota. Uh, Angel Alice, I think the only upcoming pen on the market. There's a new platinum three. Okay, I don't want to know that. Don't tell me that. Uh, new. Platinum 3776 due out next month. Yes. Um, trying to break his Chris Rapp and Chinese pens addiction. <laughs> yeah, uh, Chris Rapp found a really good niche because uh, those Chinese pens are not expensive and you can buy a lot of them. But, and yeah, JJ Massac says the same thing. And Angel Alice, that it's red. Oh, and I have a red. I have several reds. Ink guy, how many pens am I writing with? Right now I have... Uh... Oh, okay, yeah. Adding that extra word definitely makes you make more sense to me. Um, pen pals. Oops. 10 or 15, somewhere in that neighborhood. Truer red than previous one. Oh, oh. I'm curious to see it. You know, my uh, platinum president is red. I think I just... Booted the microphone. Let's get him out from under here. Um, yeah, I'd be curious to see that. I haven't really been following the platinum market. I like them so much, and I know I'll be tempted. I've been tempted the last few new ones that they came out with, and just no, 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 save the money, save the money, save the money. So, yeah, you know, there it is. All right, I'm going to flip this back around to me. I think I've shown enough pen. Plus, holy cow, I've been talking for 30 minutes. Oh, I'm going to get in trouble again for having no cobwebs on my ceiling. Uh, I have a weird phobia about that, actually, because uh, a couple of years ago, when I first moved into the house, there were cobwebs. I uh, looked at that wall over there, which is my north wall, but the south sun was shining on it because it was the deep of winter, and it was covered with cobwebs. And I thought, oh, shoot. My, what's wrong with my house? It's cracking. And then I get closer, it's all cobwebs full of dust. Like, whoops, <laughs> I need to clean more often. J.J. Massac says, I would like to see more Mandarin yellow pens, but probably in the minority. Nope, I agree with you. I'd like to see more yellow pens also. Oops, got that a little too close. You weren't supposed to see that lamp that's right level with the camera because uh, that lamp is just supposed to help illuminate the the pen. I'm closing these curtains because I really don't need people spying on me in the brightness. Uh, let's see. Other comments. I gotta stop doing this to the camera. Uh, but yeah, I like yellow pens. I also want to see some more green pens. I'd like to have some various green pens. You know, light green. Uh, let's see. 3776 Carnelian. <laughs> okay, that sounds red. Uh, Terry Love has offered me some cobwebs. Yeah, I'm uh, trying to cut back. 
Um, get the lamp out of the way here. Doggone it. Uh, Ink Guy says, doesn't the light that close make you hot? Okay, sorry. Totally misinterpreted hot wrong. I am... Wow, okay, uh, sorry. We won't talk about how I was defining it. Uh, no, this is an LED. It is, like, not hot. And uh, it's probably about a foot from my face, maybe. Yeah, a foot. A little about, about a foot. No, it doesn't make me hot. It's an LED lamp. Um, Matthew Bideau would like to see more usable yellow ink. I agree with that. I... Uh, I love yellow ink that just so many of them, you just look at them and say, oh, if only you were brighter or darker or more readable. Uh, I, I had a comment, was it last week? One of my viewers asked me about the yellow ink I was using in pens and use, and he says, well, uh, can you read it after a month? Well, that one I could, but, you know, like Private Reserve Buttercup, not so much. Uh, he's also Italian, was criticizing my clothing choices. And yeah, I'll admit, this is kind of a weird choice for clothing. But you know what? I was crawling on the roof in this. I don't dress up to crawl around on my roof and play with tar. Uh, one test I uh, try to do is a pocket test, but this shirt has no pockets. So we'll just do this. He doesn't easily want to go on the shirt. Yeah, there we go. Um, didn't easily want to go on, but it went on, so it should work in a pocket. Uh, J Peggy Williams says, lol, he's hot anyway. <laughs> Not anymore, it's winter, or getting toward winter. Joanne loves bright colored pens. I agree. Uh, bright colored pens are kind of fun. I've got absolutely none around here. Uh, they're all over there, but uh, I've got this oldie. I guess that's sort of, would have been bright maybe in stay. This one is green <laughs> so uh but yeah i uh i enjoy brightly colored acrylics i also like my slim black vintage pens um now that you can't see down below i can move this over and make it less awkward that i'm reading i uh jj masak says i'd say the thermal shirt would do more for heat than the lamp true uh th this shirt you know, it's not one i would wear in the summer but actually uh you know, I don't keep my house very warm in the winter, so works out perfectly. It's actually very comfortable. I, I, I was sleeping in it last night. Okay, do I admit that? <laughs> now that I've crawled in the roof in it, I'm not going to sleep in it. But, uh, yeah, I, I wasn't trying to dress up to, to crawl on the roof, obviously. Uh, ink guy, good usable yellow inks, golden yellow. Yep, you're right. Uh, Noodler's Golden Yellow is a go is a good one. Uh, there's a few others that you know they've kind of, or they might call it Golden Brown. But anyway, those are those are good choices for a yellow ink uh, because they have that little bit of darkness in them or that shading that just helps it all stand out. Uh, Terry Love says he's into the brown and purple inks. Uh, Diamine CP Deep Dark Purple is my favorite. I've never used that one, but. Uh, you know, I can see it. Uh, I, I enjoy purple. It's kind of got that mysterious thing going for it. Um, brown, I'm not into so so much. Uh, J.G. Masak says, Script King's Gold was the perfect yellow golden ink. Script, which would be Schaefer, I'm guessing, must not make that anymore. I uh, looked at Schaefer inks. I've got one, and then I was sent a number of samples, and that wasn't among them, so... There you go. Uh, well, Pemby says, try the Mount Mobile Beatles Psychedelic Purple. Oh, yeah. They had a pen. Two of those kind of Beatles themed. I haven't tried it. Uh, I, I've, I've seen it, you know, in samples and in letters and things, but I've never tried it. So, yeah, I might have to. Uh Angel Alice says CP is in cult pens. That that's my guess too. I was going to after the video is over, I was going to find out so I didn't feel, look like too much of a dumbass. <laughs> but uh, thank you for asking because I wanted to ask that same question. JJ Masak says I have a hard time with my eyes with the deep dark diamine inks as they always look black. I'll agree. Let me uh, roll back a ways. Uh, 
a viewer who may or oops, sorry, you can't see that. Who may or may not be present tonight sent me uh, these. I can tell the difference. I can tell one's bl uh, blue, one's green, but they are very dark inks. So yeah, I can I can see why you'd struggle with that. Krishna Freedom Gold is nice. I have to look at that. You know, I've uh, tried a few Krishna inks. Um, Kanakona was very pretty, but very, 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 very pale. Uh, so I have to look into that. Uh, Dea Tremendous Mahatma Gandhi is a pretty saffron yellow. You know what? I have a sample of that here. I Nope, I haven't inked it up yet. But I have a sample of that. So expect to see that soon on pens and use. Uh, and Terry Love says, oh, coal pens have a deep dark, dark range from diamine. So yeah, that would be these puppies. Two of them. Uh, Angel Alice says, Krishna inks almost always have a hard start for me. I have not had trouble hard starting um, the diamine, or uh, sorry, the Krishna inks. What I did discover, um, I think it was the Canacona. Pretty sure it was the Canacona. What I did discover with the Canacona is it got so it would, uh, it, it crested. And, and so, yeah. Yeah, now I'm remembering. I had a lot of criticism actually on the channel because I had the had it in the Platinum President. It actually wrote well enough there, but I had all these crusties growing around the nib and feed, and everybody's like, well, how can you treat such a beautiful pen that way? I said, I'm sorry. But yeah, it was crusting, and uh, that was gross. Uh, ink guy, I will send you an email to get your address and send you a sample. Okay, that sounds good. I, I would be curious to try that. Thank you. Very generous. And by the way, I uh, am down an email address. I'm not sure how, but did something on my Apple account. So I'm down to just waskysquirrel at gmail.com and, of course, my personal email and my school email. But, you know, you guys don't need those because that's not what this is about. Matthew Beto, I like Halloween Orange Krishna. Never tried it. Oh, and there's another one. I have never actually tried this brand. Sites Kreuznach Orchidine Violet, Deep Orchid. Certainly sounds pretty just from your words there. And Angel says the a volcano ink was always a hard start till I added a dropper to a distilled water. Yeah, some inks. Noodlers can be guilty of this too. They just have too much dye in them, and uh, yes, it makes for a nice, vibrant color. But at the same time, it can create issues of its own, like hard starts or uh, oh, are we going to dry today, or should I just come back tomorrow? Type of thing. JJ Masak, that jungle volcano Krishna ink did a very bad things to me. Couldn't find a pen at light. I used it. Um, What pen was it? It's been a long time. It was a Russian pen. And, uh, yeah, I, uh, you know, it had a nice sheen to it. It was a little bit of a greenish sheen. It was not a bad color, but I wasn't super impressed. Angel Alice says, uh, Dean, that ink is so, Dean was talking, oh, Seitz Kreuznach. Uh, that may be why I haven't tried it. That if it is really expensive, you know, I'm I'm at the I'm kind of oversaturated with inks. I mean, we're looking at just a selection of my inks back here and here and hidden in here. And oh yeah, in there and over there. <laughs> so yeah, somebody is not looking for more ink at the moment. Uh, ink guy says the email is sent. Let's see if I got it. Uh I'd probably come to Wasky Squirrel. Okay. Yep. I got it. I will, uh, I, I don't want to like type while I'm trying to do video, but I, I, uh, will leave your email open. I'll send it to you. So thank you. Very, very, very generous. Uh, JG Masek says $13 for hundred milliliters, including shipping. Wow. Yeah, that's cheap. I, I can't comment. I don't know. I've haven't really specifically searched that ink out. Um, oh, looks like I'm getting a sample Halloween orange. <laughs> My whole dream of, I'm going to use this bottle of ink up, uh, may become crashing to a halt here. 
Um, you know, I have this dream that I'll get down to just all my inks fit back here, but don't know. Dean Martin. So, oh, get it from eBay. Yeah, eBay, you can get some bargains you can't get in other places. Terry Love. Uh, Ancient Copper has a habit of drying up in his pens. I agree. Um, it's only certain pens, but that can be as crusty, crustalicious as a uh, as the Canacona I was talking about earlier. Uh, just a beautiful, beautiful color. But that's part of why I almost like Noodler's Antietam better. It's almost the same color without those issues. Trouble with the Antietam is then you get the, oh, are we going to dry today or should I just come back next week? Uh, let's see here. Oh, Ink Guy says no hurt. Yeah, okay, that's good. I, I, I'll do it after this video because I'll forget if I don't. Angel Alice says I buy more ink than pens these days. I'm more on the pen side right now, but I probably have enough pens also. <laughs> ink guy, every time he finishes a bottle of ink, it's a small victory over the universe. Yes, I want to use up this Apache Sunset and not replace it. You know, okay, ink, it just, uh, I have a lot of inks with that color, so do I really need another one? So for now, let's, let's, let's get her down. Uh, J.G. Masek says, the real test will be when you kill both those one liter bottles of Pelican inks you bought. Yeah, that, that's why those are at school to give away to students, you know, to for the fountain pens I give them. Because um, I'm hoping, but yeah, that looking back, that's a purchase I probably shouldn't have made. I should have just bought a bottle of each color and called her good. But no, I had to go into overkill mode. So maybe by the time I retire, I'll use them up. But I will not be buying any more Pelican Black or Pelican Royal Blue because I'll just refill them at school. Uh, AJ Close says, ain't that a kick in the head? Drawing a total blank there. Uh, Dean Martin says, Oh, okay. He uses Zeitz, Kroinach, some unpronounceable French word. Red is nice, too. It is Burgunderholt in German. So apparently that's German. I'm going to not embarrass myself by trying to pronounce that. Patchy Sunset never really got it to look like, yeah, I agree. I, you know, it's, it, it does shade. Really not amazing. Uh, JJ Masak says, uh, I had better luck with Noodler's Habanero. I have not tried Noodler's Habanero. Um, I should get a sample. You know, I, I kind of like the notion of Noodler's Habanero, even if, I don't know if I care for the color, but. Yeah, it'd be a good one. And Angel Alice suggests, uh, oh, two lifetimes use up my Pilot Namiki 350 milliliter bottles. Uh, I actually had one of those bottles. Have. I still have it. Uh, Noodler's Black, or sorry, Pilot Black. Surprisingly, it took me a few years, but I did get that just about used up. And Angel Alice agrees that uh, Habanero is 100% better than Apache. Okay, now, uh, now I understand. Chris LJ is pointing out my <laughs> uh, lack of culture here because I actually know who the singer Dean Martin is. I just drew a complete blank there. But, yeah, he does have a song, Ain't That a Kick in the Head. I, I was trying to make Ain't That a Kick in the Pants out of it, which is another expression. But, yeah. I uh, Dean Martin says, I'm doing okay with German. <laughs> yeah, only okay. Uh, I, I took a semester of it college and uh, studied a little on my own and periodically pick up some stuff and try and read it. And Yeah, my German is weak, 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 weak. But yeah, Burgundy Holt is Burgundy Red. Yep, that makes sense. The big bottle basic black, that is. Yes, and I agree with you actually on both points, J.J. Masek. Um, 
that's why I went with the Pelican after I emptied out those pilot bottles because, yeah, they, they feather too much. I, I like the pilot blue black. I think that's probably my favorite blue black ink, but again, it feathers too much and that's annoying. Have I tried Diamine Sher Sherwood Green? I don't think I have. You know, I've tried a few different greens, um, a few samples. I just don't think. No, I have tried that. That actually is a very nice green. I'm, I'm confusing it with uh, the Roar and Klingner um, drawn a blank, but there's Roar and Klingner that's kind of a nice green. But yeah, the Diamine Sherwood Green is nice. Uh, there's a Private Reserve Sherwood Green that seems pretty similar that I've also tried. Um, yeah, I just need to get my number of inks squished down so I can try some more inks. I need to trill that R a little more, and you're there. Burgunder Rot. No, Germans don't do the tip of their tongue. They do the middle of the tongue. Burgunder Rot. Rot. So like I'm clearing my throat. I took Spanish in high school, three years of it. Uh, so I've got some bad habits from there. Lamy Blue Black. Oops. Skipped a line. Oh, in an extra fine. Yeah, I suppose an extra fine you wouldn't have the feathering issues. And I think with a lot of Japanese writing, because it's a Japanese brand, you know, they would use an extra fine nib. Uh, Matthew Bedell, Lamy Blue Black is good. Haven't tried it, but would like to. Um, probably I'll have to get just a sample, because like I said, I'm kind of overloaded back there. And yeah, I like Lamy Black because it's very well behaved. Uh, Angel Alice. Rarely uses extra fine nibs. Yeah, same here. Uh, in my regular writing, I like a fine, but uh, fun writing and the various colors, I don't so much. Uh, Ackerman number 27 green. Who do I have? Oh, I have, oops, you can't see it. Ackerman 26. <laughs> Uh, Inkai says, somehow on my mother's side, my mother only spoke high German. Nobody knows where she le learned it. Maybe she had a good high school teacher. Um, Angel Alice uses soft nibs and stub nibs. Yeah, I, I like my soft nibs. I've uh, That's part of what I was looking for here. That's totally why I bought this pen. Uh, we'll find out. I haven't written with it yet. Um... Ooh, thank you, Matthew Beto. Yep, for a sample. I'm I'm curious to try it. I uh, no, don't worry. I'm not buying any more inks. Like I said, I'm trying to cut them down. I've got this much Apache Sunset left. I'm hoping to get that one done pretty quick. You know, a couple of first impressions. I've got one that's an eyedropper. So really hoping in the next few weeks, if I batch film a bunch of first impressions that are all Apache Sunset, I can get rid of it. A uh, Noodler's inks in general. Dean Martin says they don't dry, especially on the better paper. I agree. Now, they're better at drying when you first put them in the pen, but the longer they've been in the pen, the harder time they have drying. And, yes, uh, they are tested on cheaper copier paper. I think Nathan Tardif was actually pushing for inks that work on cheaper paper rather than more expensive paper because he's more of all about getting a bargain. And I imagine he's about getting a bargain with the paper as well as the pen and ink. That That's always been my interpretation of his inks. Um, Koinor ink. Oh, you know what? Koinor, which I probably horribly mutilated. I think that used to be a brand from Czechoslovakia. You know, not Central Pen, but a, another brand from Czechoslovakia. Could be wrong. Uh, JG Masak says, you could always go with the Noodler's Polar Inks. They can't find any feather, feather <laughs> any paper they like and don't bleed through. I had some samples probably four or five years ago of those inks. I, it was before I even got into reviewing. I agree. They were awful. I didn't even finish them. I hated them so much. Uh, their fast drying inks are also pretty awful. The worst ink I've ever had for feathering is Noodler's Summer Tanager. Oh, 
I even tried putting that in a rollerball pad and it feathered. It was awful, awful ink. So yeah, they have some problems. JJ Masak says he can second the Koinor ink, so good to hear. Uh, Angel Alice, once in a while, I still come across the odd bottles of Tokawa Matsu. I think that's the only ink I would buy until the Philly Pen Show. Never tried it. How's my Stipula Prisma Pen? Did I solve the feed flow issue? I've been meaning to do a video on that. Um, it's better. It's not solved. Um, I've gotten to the point where I've basically decided, you know, only certain inks and uh, don't use it for continuous daily writing. Use it for, like, letter writing where maybe I'll do a page in this color or another page in another color because, uh, yeah, it's... Uh, that nib does very well if I put it in, say, a noodler's pen with a noodler's feed. I can get a lot out of that pen if I put a different nib in it. But I haven't been able to talk myself into that being a good permanent solution. I, uh, it's like the nib should work in the pen. And yeah, I know I should probably have con uh, contacted Sipula, but I didn't. Okay, so it still is uh, Koinor is still a brand from the Czech Republic. Good to know. Uh, Matthew Bedell, they are wet document blues, really good. Okay, I will look for a sample. Like I said, I really not need more bottles. Uh, Luke M says, Noodler's Base State Blue is the Noodler's. I have no success at all on any kind of paper. Too bad I like the color. Wonderful color, but I agree. Uh, the only thing I was ever successful with is that ink has to be in a extra fine nib that's relatively dry. Uh, right now I have it in a Waterman Hemisphere with a, it's either a fine or an extra fine nib. Uh, it's empty right now because uh, I do get annoyed. But yeah, beautiful color, but that ink is very hard to work with. Angel Alice. Those new Euchers aren't that great. They're hit or miss with the standard ink carts. I haven't used them. Uh, Daniel St. Marie, greetings from Fernie, British Columbia. Well, welcome. Dean Martin says, I have some things to do to inks that no one would believe, like putting them in, <laughs> putting them in the microwave and heating them. I've got an ink. Well, it's not at the front, but uh, it's in this batch right here that's actually an overheated color. It's supposed to be uh, like a purple that got spoiled by overheating which is an interesting story behind the name of an ink. Um, so, yeah, that you're putting it in the microwave is really cool. Uh, Dean, oh, sorry, Terry Love says, I only have three Noodler's inks, and I have never used a single one of them. But if they're UK specials, that might be why. Well, Pemby, is there a reference for wet-dry inks? I haven't found a... I'm sure there's one out there. I just haven't run into one, but uh, Matthew Beto says he can send you one. Uh, AJ Close says, I like noodlers for playing around with, but writing a letter, you end up with more on your hands and smears the letter. Yes. So, like, I'll write a page off to bed, come back the next day and do the next page, and hopefully it's dry by then. Yeah. Unless it's freshly inked up, that, that's a problem I have with a lot of noodler sinks. I don't like that. And, uh, Pen inks just shouldn't be that way. Um, yeah, JJ Masak says you can't agree on what makes a wet versus a dry ink. Absolutely. That is uh, subjective, has to do with the pen that it's in. There, there's just so many different things to it. Um. <laughs> <laughs> JJ Masak says you can boil down poorly saturated inks and fix them as well. True. I don't know how brave I would be that way, but yeah. And uh, Andrew Camacho says Bay State Blue and a Twisby Fine Nib. Yeah, before I had the uh, Bay State Blue in the Waterman Hemisphere, uh, I originally had it in a 
Twisby 540 with an extra fine nib, which was wonderful until that cracking issue happened. Then I moved it into a Twisby Classic, which... Oh, and that pen leaked a little around the gasket, so that's why I gave it up there. Uh, but it's been wonderful in my Waterman Hemisphere. Uh, well, oops, Angel Alice, the only inks I've had go bad are Monteverde. I haven't had a Monteverde ink go bad. I had a couple uh, um, private reserve inks go bad. They just got uh, weird little floaties, and I just thought, I eh, don't want to put that in my pen. So, uh, yeah, private reserve, but that was the older formulation. Uh, from what I understand, they've solved that issue. Um, you can measure the viscosity of ink using a tilt test and comparing them to water is a standard to guide off of. Yeah, you know, put a drop of ink, put uh, put a drop of the water and tilt and see how quickly they run. I suppose that would measure viscosity. Um, somewhat subjective, but well, no. Oh. Because you can measure distance and time. Yeah, you can get a measurement off of that. Um, and, and then uh, Matthew Beto points out it's a uh, cohesion issue. Yeah, their molecules like each other more or less. I think that's how I've been measuring viscosity. You know, I think the thing with wet... Do you get a lot of ink on the page or not? And, uh, you know, viscosity would be a big part of that. But also, you know, if it comes out and just goes, Psh, and the feathers everywhere, that's so different from when it pools nicely and then dries in a nice little puddle in one spot. Uh, <laughs> he uses the dregs for clothing dye. <laughs> Have I found an absolute... Ooh, good question. Have I found an absolute favorite pen yet? Well, I think you know I like the Lamy 2000. Um, I like the Caveco V14S kind of in the same role. Um, favorite pen. Okay, where I'm at would be favorite pen for what? You know, for just business like, let's get down to writing. I like the Lamy 2000 a lot. I think I like that Caveco V14S just a hair better as far as the writing experience, but I think the Lamy 2000 feels a lot better in the hand. Um, if we're trying to do fun writing, I think some of these pens with the Bach nibs, those really flexible vintage Bach nibs would be where I'd be at. Uh, if, if we're going to talk... You know what? I take everything I just said back. My absolute favorite pen, because it fits in a lot of different roles, are the vintage Aurora 88. I have one with a fine nib. It, it is somewhat flexible. So you get that. You get a good writing experience if you're just trying to write notes quickly. Um, it's comfortable in the hand. It fills well. Yeah. Vintage Aurora 88 with a probably a fine, fine soft or whatever it was called back then. Nib. Vintage Aurora 88. There we go. Um, Luke Amp mentions about, oh, Lamy 2000 in broad. I love mine. In fact, I need to pull that out. Um, JJ Masak, good point. You know, depends on what you're doing. Uh, that Aurora 88 is a lot of fun. But what am I doing? I, I don't like to have that with me though, everywhere I go because what if something happens to it? It's somewhat difficult to to replace. Uh, Matthew Beto mentions he likes expensive pens but loves Lamy Safari. I have a Lamy Safari. It's a bright coral colored one. I just never really got into it. Dean Martin. But uh, most fountain pen inks are not UV safe. True, uh, a lot of inks will fade over time. Now, I keep my notebooks closed. So that protects them from UV light. But uh, 
you know, uh, I have had a couple of, what ink? I guess it was uh, Parker Quink washable blue kind of tends to fade. Aurora 88K is J.G. Masex carry a lot. Yeah, good pen. Just kind of scared something will happen to it. Um, okay, Matthew Bedow is now branching out and mentioning the Parker 45. Yes, very good pen. One that I like. Uh, Angel Alice says that she has two of the black Goulet pens. You know, I remember when the Ellie Delta Unicus came out. I was just like, ooh, what? And then I was just like, or do I? And uh, I dithered long enough that Delta went out of business. But uh, they looked like good pens. Uh, okay, yeah, a couple others. Uh, Kenalea, that's the Hawaiian pen, if I remember correctly. M1000. I have an M1, uh, an M800, so I can see why you like that. Conid regular. I really was interested in Conid a few years ago. Uh, I've successfully talked myself out of it. Um, mainly was interested because of the filling mechanism. Um, I may pick one up at some point, but uh, I've kind of calmed myself down about that. Okay. And Dean Martin says, any Pelican pen, as long as it isn't too big at the grip, and says an 800 about, is about his limit. Yeah, the 800 is just a nice size. And yeah, every new fountain pen user should try should buy a Parker 45. I agree. Parker 45 is a, a good pen, and you can get a number of different nibs with it. I only have the one, but uh, yeah, that's just a good pen to use. In fact, I'm thinking I need to ink it up tonight. I have some letter writing and some correcting to do. So both of them would serve well. Well, speaking of that, I probably am going to have to close this up soon because I do have correcting to do and some grades to put in. Um, Angel Alice says she has 500 plus pens from Visconti that are best better used as darts for a dartboard. Have you seen the ad for Pond Pens from Norway where they literal, literally throw fountain pens at a dartboard? You're making me think of that. Uh, ink guy takes his pens with him and doesn't worry about it. It can be lost, stolen, or broken, but in the end, it's just a pen. Uh, he'll lend out his M1000 or Visconti Medice and let people try them without fear. Um, yeah, modern pen. I guess I would be scared to loan out some of my vintage pens because, oh, where am I going to get another Moster Pencala? Uh, Andrew Camacho says, I'm astounded at how well some Platinum Preppies write. Absolutely. Platinum Preppy is a good pen. I, I'm impressed by Platinum, just some of their cheaper pens, like the Preppy. Just awesome, awesome writers. Uh, J.J. Massac says, most Italian pens are like Italian sports cars. Boy, I've heard that a lot. And not just from you. Uh, great looking, but in a repair shop more than in use. I remember when I was a kid, I, I ran across a, a, what was it, an Alfa Romeo Spider. I've never been much for sports cars, but I just looked at that and I thought, that's kind of cool. But uh, I think I'm glad I have my Toyota Camry as boring as it looks. It's 20 years old and still runs like new. It's got a little bit of rust on it. Uh, the windows don't all work. I'm missing driver's side door handle, but you know what? Good car. Uh, you should have a 3776 if you like one of the new finishes. Yes, 3776 is awesome. I have one of each nib size, except I don't have an extra fine or an ultra extra fine. And let's see. High-end Visconti is overrated. Yeah, I actually, I like my Visconti Homo sapiens, uh, but the other Visconti I own is a steel nib, which is actually pretty nice. Terry Love is going to have to... Oh, he's feeling insomniac. He's going to have to go search for something else. Boy, if I was up as late as you, tomorrow at school would be rough. Uh, Flavio Jr. says real blue-black. His favorite color is a little hard to find. Probably. The, the Parker blue-black, I know, is kind of has a greenish color to it. It's not 
what I think of as blue black. And each one of them has kind of their own twist to blue black. Uh, Angel out. You know, the best blue black maybe is like, a, was it Dea Tremendous or uh, uh, Private Reserve had like ebony green or ebony blue. I liked whatever one it was. It was the ebony blue. Uh, let's see. Angel Alice, forever to find a 377. Yeah, soft medium. Uh, I have a soft medium. Right now I'm using it for addresses. Honestly, I, I like the soft find better, but that's just me. Uh, their soft nibs are actually kind of nice. JJ Masak, the key to any good car is one thing it's paid for. Yes, uh, my Camry has been paid for for well over a decade. <laughs> uh, I didn't buy it new either, which helped a lot with the price. Um, Dean, I totally lost my line. Matthew Bedell, yeah, a well-made car. I'm hoping you're not talking about the Alfa Romeo Spider. I hope you're talking about the Toyota Camry. Uh, Dean Martin, I should do this live chat more often. Yeah, I should. I uh, used to do them on Sundays occasionally. I just hadn't found time. I honestly didn't expect to be talking until after 7 o'clock tonight. I thought it would just be a quick 20 minute and then everybody would go away. But, uh, you know, this has been working. Terry Love is retired. Yeah, that makes a difference. I can sleep in in the summer too. Uh, Matthew Beto, alphas tend to fall apart and the electrics are not good, but they are pretty. Yeah. Um, living in rural North Dakota, I don't see myself ever buying one because I'd take it down to the local garage and they'd just be like, so, <laughs> won't go there. Sailor Blue Black dries to a dark gray. Um, never tried it. JG Masek, Pelican Blue Black is nice, but they don't export out of Europe anymore. Oh, because they have a lot of colors they sell overseas. I'm surprised by that. Masak, sorry, did I say Macaque? I'm getting tired now. Uh, Luke M, looking for a dark black no sheen suggestions. I like, uh, well, the Pelican black is nice. Lamy black. Noodler's black if you keep it off a good paper. Aurora black is supposed to be super black. Am I liking my Parker Slim Fold? Yes, I like it a lot. Uh, as far as the difference between Simfold, Junior, and Victory, you're kind of outside my wheelhouse, but I think the main thing is size. I don't know which one's which, but I know some are short, uh, some are fatter than others. Uh, I, I couldn't tell you which one's which. I'm pretty sure the Simfold is one of the skinnier ones. So, um, I do have a Parker Duofold Junior, which is full size around, but short. Victory. I've heard of it. I uh, can't say anything smart about it. Terry Love. Girbon has what a blue black. I like. Can't remember what they call it. Yeah, I don't know either. Ooh, Angel. Alice says she had hers put. To, yeah, I've never had a pen tuned at the store. That might be fun to try. And uh, Matthew, okay, so he's talking about the Toyota, not the Alfa Romeo. Okay, relieved. The soft fine after a light grinding is amazing. So I'd be curious if you mean uh, grinding to make it more flexible or just to make it more stub-like. And uh, Terry Love Blue. N-U-I-T? Knew it. Don't know how to say it. That's it. And Lobby Blue Black has no sheen. Uh, e S S R. Totally drawn a blank what E S S R stands for, but I know it's a thing. Uh, Iron Gall is a really nice dark blue black. Okay. Well, I think uh, New New E. Okay, so it stands for New. Okay, New E. French blue nut or night. New E. French is hard. <laughs> uh, blue New E. French blue night. Okay. Making sense now. Uh, Pelican 
Font India. Oh, okay. Yeah, that, that is a thing. Um, Sigui, uh, sorry, I butchered. Uh, to make the pen less toothy. So, yeah, platinum nibs do tend to have a lot of feedback, and some people don't like that. Uh, platinum nibs, I like the feedback, so it doesn't bother me, but I can see where some might like a little bit of smoothing, and then they've got their ideal pen. Because, yeah, that, that soft fine is very nice nib. I can get a lot of line variation out of it without a lot of pressure. Um, I think I get a lot more line variation out of that than their soft medium. Just a all around impressive nib. And uh, when I did my video where I compared the different nib sizes, I think the big thing I brought up was, uh, you know, the soft ones are a lot thinner than the regular ones. Uh, let's see. Okay, Nui means night, pronounced Nui. Okay, Siggy. All right, I will try to do that. And, uh, yeah, I, I agree with you, J.J. Masak. A little bit of feedback makes you realize you're writing and not... Um, you know, it's not supposed to be like a unicorn dancing across the paper. It, it's, you know, writing. You know, some pens have too much drag. It's actually... Now I'm wondering. Okay, yeah. Th this pen <laughs> that the whole thing originally was about has just enough feedback that I can feel it's on the paper. But I see now it's, uh, I've been going for an hour and 11 minutes, and I do have quite the stack of grading to do tonight. So uh, I hate to do this, but I really need to get going. So I want to thank you all for watching. I see a few other people talking about feedback here. But yeah, Scratchy is annoying. Um, yeah, you, you want enough. It's like driving a car. You, you want to feel the road, but you don't want to feel every single bump like you don't have tires. So, uh, yeah, I want to thank you all for watching. Oh, sensual. Ooh. <laughs> um, I can think of some other areas where I'd want feedback that have to do with sensual, but uh, my students might watch this, so we'll leave that one alone. <laughs> yes, uh, but uh, I, I'm glad you all came. Um I do need to grade, like I said. Um, my students would probably thank you if you kept distracting me all night. I finally just gave up and went to bed. But, yeah, I do got to get it done. Um, so thank you all for being here. And uh, we'll close this puppy out. So we'll see you all later. And I'll, I will take some quick photographs so the video description can actually, to the Evernote link will actually have some high-resolution fit photos. And you can see what all... You know, get a better close-up. Plus, oh, plus I only have 27% battery left, so I'm probably only good for another half hour or so anyway. <laughs> so I want to thank you all for watching. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.